a trip is like you're going on a trip to go do all of these different things. And a vacation is like a state of mind. And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? How are you doing today? Thank you so much for listening, and I am Chris. And I'm Christine, and welcome to episode 93 of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. 93 is one of my favorite numbers. You know, I probably always say you that, say that every, every single week. Yeah, but that, truly, I really do. Uh, 1993 was when I got my driver's license way back in the day, <laughs> way back in the day. Yeah, and how's that working for you now? Yeah, well, you know, I actually use it for my job, so I guess it's uh, paid off. Yes, I guess it has. Well, welcome to episode 93, Chris. Oh, you made do, it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Seven weeks until the big one zero zero. If we make it that far, yeah. Mm, good point. If, <laughs> if I make it that far. Hey, so, hey, baby, how are you doing right now? Today is Saturday. It's getting warmer. We got the air conditioning going. Yeah, it's pretty warm outside. Um, I am a little bit hangry. I haven't really had anything to eat today. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. That explains so much. Well, it does explain so much because I was planning to make you a very nice lunch before you became Mr. Meanie. I was not Mr. Meanie. Yes, you were. Uh, I had all planned out. I was like working all week. I tried out my little um, sandwich approach a couple of different days this week to try and get it just right. I was trying to perfect a hot pastrami sandwich with grilling the bread just perfectly because the trick is you don't use butter, you use mayonnaise. Wait, on on bread? On the bread, you put a little... Yes, that's what they do on tortas in the Mexican culture is you use a little bit of mayonnaise because it crisps up better than butter because butter will kind of get soggy if it's not right at the right temperature. But mayonnaise, because it has the egg in it, just a little bit of egg, it'll crisp it up just right. And it doesn't taste mayonnaise because I hate mayonnaise. But I'd been perfecting it all this week. And I was planning on making you lunch until you became Mr. Meanie Man. Where is my lunch at, babe? Uh, it is in pieces in the fridge, not assembled because you decided to be a grumpy puss. Oh, I was. Oh, I'm, first off, I'm very sorry mm-hmm. for being Mr. Grumpy Butt. Thank you. And, I didn't uh, say grumpy butt, but that's a nice description. <laughs> but, a it, but it permeated your entire body, so it didn't just isolate itself to your booty. Oh, okay. So it was, you know, a whole grumpy human. And it's a nice booty at that, speaking of which. So anyway. <laughs> you don't even really have one. You need, what are you you need some about? booty gains. You need to be like. What are you talking about? Some, I, my butt is fantastic. You need to go do some hip thrusts and do some lifting. You need some booty gains. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Bubble butt. <laughs> other than that i guess i'm fine i mean eh, it's it is what it is it's summer it's, it, it's, hot. it's getting hot over here the weather is turning it around and it's becoming like it's june right now and june i remember last year was june was the year we really like i'm sorry the month that we cranked on no the it wasn't air- it was july june was the month we cranked on the air conditioning and okay. really turned it on mm-hmm. like actually turned it on and started using it more regularly although when like you today. live in a house with chris you don't really turn on the air conditioner because he's like one of those like scrooges where it's like it's only 78 degrees <laughs> wait it's only 97 <laughs> you don't need the air conditioner on little whippersnapper <laughs> whippersnapper <laughs> Little whipper snapper. Yeah. And so I'm like, please, babe, I think I'm dying of heat exhaustion. And he's like, all right, but we're going to keep it at like 92. <laughs> 92. You know, it's funny. Is that I don't I- know why you're sweating. <laughs> it's only 105 inside. <laughs> That's a good impression of me, by the way. It I is. love it. It's exactly how you sound. Hey, speaking of weather, hey, you know where we were at last, was it last weather, week? No, speaking of weather, no, we're not talking about that yet. Why not? Because you're going to tell me how your week is. My week has been great. Actually, my week back to work because we just got back from vacation last week. And you know, your first day back from vacation, your first week back from vacation, I'm dragging my feet. I mean, I'm like. How is that different from every other day? 
Actually, tell you, it's, it's really not. It's, it's almost the same. Uh, yeah, I think about it. Dragging but, your feet. Like every day, you're like, oh, here I am. But you love your job. Oh, of course I love my job. And did anything exciting happen this week at work? Um, well, oh, I had to go to a meeting yesterday at work. Yeah. Actually, it was some, um, because uh, we were out on COVID maybe. How long ago was it? It was like back in December. Mm-hmm. We were out on COVID for like three weeks. Yeah, three weeks off. So I, there was some Not meet- three weeks off. We had you sick time. Well, yeah, but it was sick time. I was vi- physically gone from the company for yes. like three weeks. And so I missed some important um, meetings and some uh, safety meetings they had from work. So I had to make them up. So I went into the office yesterday early to make them up. And I um, had like the Zoom call type of thing, but they didn't have a camera on my computer, only on their computer and, and the uh, the trainer's computer. And the trainer was in the back, was a, was a East Coast time. So he was out there. So he had to go in early to do it. But um, it was fun. I did that. And yep. I- so I ended up getting a photo of Chris with his like feet up on the extra chair and like leaning back with his headset on. And he's like, I was like, why are you sending me this picture? Well, because it's like my first Zoom meeting. And I'm like, welcome to my life. Yeah. So, how'd it, was, it feel? It felt great. Although they couldn't see me. Uh-huh. I feel bad that he didn't see me because I was wearing T-shirt and shorts and flip flops and had my sh- feet on one of their office desk chairs. And I was kicking back with the head- headset on. That's which, not very professional. You know what was weird, though, when I used the headset is that. I couldn't hear myself back. Like when I talk into this podcasting gear, I hear myself as I talk. When I was on the headset, I talked, but I couldn't hear myself. So it kind of threw me off a little bit. But that's... That's kind of what it's supposed to be. I know. Yeah, I know. I, I, you're not supposed to hear yourself back. But I I'm mean, used I to guess it. you do on podcasting, but on Zoom, you never do. Because that would be weird where you're like, now I'm talking too loud. Oh, I'm so self-conscious. I sound like such a dork. I would never think that. But. Um, you're right. Because you think so highly of yourself. Thank you. Thank you so you much. You like... It's so funny, like you've talked before about, you know, being insecure or whatever, but you are the person that has like, you you love yourself so much. What do you mean by that? You're like the most vain person I've ever met well, th- in my Well, life. first off, thank you. What do you mean by that? Like you're just very conceited. Oh, okay. Self-adore- thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. Are you saying that I look in the mirror like 10 times a day? Um, That would be an understatement. <laughs> we get into an elevator that has a mirror in it. And the first thing that he's doing is like staring at himself like, how you doing? <laughs> You Whenever you wake up and you bring your coffee to come and sit down, we have this big old mirror on the wall right by where we have coffee and you like check yourself out the whole time. If you can see yourself, if you can see a reflection of yourself, you're constantly checking yourself out. You're like, hey, 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 guy, hey, how you doing? Well, you're looking pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. No, no, that's what you say to yourself. Oh, right. Of course. <laughs> of course I do. Mm-hmm. So, hey, baby, how has your week been at work? Back to work after being um, gone? It was fine it was productive and you know just we're rounding out the fiscal year our new fiscal year starts on july 1st so i just was winding down a couple of big projects and um kind of setting the infrastructure for next year uh but yeah that's about it i mean nothing nothing too flashy and fancy i um you know got unpacked and everything and settled back home and um had all three kids last night, so I'm a little bit tired because I was running them around trying to get their energy out, and um, we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy here in San Diego with the mask mandate being lifted in a lot of places, not everywhere, but in a lot of places, and um, people are starting to like get back to normal, so we're starting to feel a bit more comfortable socializing, um, and after coming back from our trip, I waited a couple of days to go out and do anything really because I just wanted to make sure I didn't bring any bugs back with me or anything like that. So, yeah, that's about it. Speaking of fancy vacations and uh, going somewhere else and coming back to uh, here, we went on a nice little trip uh, last uh, two weeks ago, a week ago. No, it wasn't even a week ago. I mean, we left Thursday a week ago, but yeah, a week ago this time we were on that trip and we're going to be chatting about it. On this episode, we have a fun one lined up for you where you can hear more about the fabulous adventures of Chris and Christine, and we'll be back with that right after this. Hey there, K2 crew. We love having you as our loyal listeners. To keep up to date with what's happening behind the scenes, check us out on social media. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to follow our Facebook page. Yeah, tag us in your favorite fun stories, and guess what? You might just end up on the show. Ooh-ooh. Today's episode is brought to you by Amio. Amio is a travel booking platform that makes planning your journey in Europe and North America effortless. Just enter the travel details and Amio will magically give you all the train, bus, flight, and ferry options for your journey. 
It's never been simpler to book your first real vacation for 2021. And best of all, using Amio saves you time and money. Yeah, that's a win-win. Amio wants to help you leave your house this summer by offering 5% off your next booking. Just head over to Amio.com and use the code Amio5 at checkout. Valid until July 31st for new users on all modes of transportation. It's just a pick-me-up 2021 needs. Amio, plan, book, and love the journey. Terms and conditions apply. And welcome back, everybody. You are in for a treat because we have another edition of the many adventures of Chris and Christine coming up for you. Oh, fantastic. You know, we went down to Mexico. That is, uh, Mexico. That, that is a country right below America. If you live in, if you're no, not right below the United States because they are in America. Oh, when I think about that. <laughs> yeah. Right below the United States of America. There's another country called Mexico. And we went down there last week. Yeah, we did. Uh, so it's funny that you would call it America because I've heard, I have heard that Canada and Mexico get upset when people refer to us as America because they are North America. And so technically, Canada and Mexico are also Americans. They just don't, they're not United States of Americans because they're in North America. Technically, anybody in South America you know would be Americans, too. You know, why don't you go tell that to the Border Patrol see what they say about that? I know. We're all Americans. Can we all just get along? All right. So we had this big trip planned, but it almost did not happen because... Why was that, Chris? Because we were waiting on my passport to come in. We ordered my passport uh, right in the nick of time, but we had exactly, what, six weeks before we had to get the passport here, before we had to leave, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of backstory to that. I've been asking you for like two years to get your passport and you've been putting it off forever. Well, and I, finally, had the, I had the passport. Well, you had an expired one. And uh, we originally, we were going to get the passport done so that we could go on our anniversary trip in November. And you had actually just got the photos done like that day when we were going to be submitting it. And that was the day that my parents invited us to go on the trip. And so it was like, I don't know. Well, it was, per- it was perfect timing because we got that all done immediately. And then we rushed it over to FedEx. And we rushed over the passport office and did a rush job on it. And we finally got it. Like, was it a week prior to the trip? We got the passport. Came yeah. Was it even that far? In- I think it was that far in advance. Yeah. Like a week before. And I didn't know if it was even going to go. No, it was four days, five days before. We got it on the 12th. And we left on the – we got it on the 11th and we left on the 17th. So five days, yeah. Right. So five days later, we head on this trip. I actually had the the time booked already from work to take off Thursday, Friday. So it's going to take a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. And we're going to use all of those days to go on this vacation. Well, yeah. Let's back it up just a little bit. So on uh, just about six weeks ago, my parents reached out and my dad reached out and invited us to go on a trip. Um, they have friends that have friends that own a condo in La Paz, Mexico, and my parents have gone down there several times, and it's a three-bedroom, three-bathroom, three-bedroom, four-bathroom condo, really nice in La Paz, and um, there were two two sets of couples that were going to go, and they had a third suite available, and they invited us to go as uh, my graduation gift, and they thought that it would be really fun because when my parents and their friends came down here before their last trip, they stopped here at our house for dinner, and that was the night, Chris, that you were making – well, you were cooking chicken pot pie from Costco and we made like a little charcuterie board and had so much fun. And they thought that you were so funny and so sweet oh, really? that they were like, well, we really get along. Like it would be fun to have you guys travel with us. And so because you were so nice to them, you know, it was a rare occasion of you being on your best what? behavior. <laughs> they decided what are you talking to, about? They decided to invite us. And so – um, we were getting ready. For Always this. nice, baby. We were getting ready for this trip. And it really was a big deal because it was our first, as we mentioned last, ep- two episodes ago, it was our first international trip together, right? Correct, Mundo. Yes. So uh, do you want to start off with the actual day of? Well, I will start off with talking about uh, we were leaving on a Thursday morning. So my parents drove down on Wednesday night and it was fun. We'd like sat and watched Netflix that night and had ice cream. They We ate your ice cream that you had left. Which I know. I was, looking, I, was, I was looking for it when I got off work last that same night. I was looking, where's my ice cream at? I couldn't but find it. I grew up 
loving ice cream with my parents. And so my mom, after they got settled, it was like five minutes later, she's like, do you have any ice cream? And I was like, well, actually, I do. I have Chris's ice cream. Here, have it. Take it. He's not going to use it. That's not my voice, but okay. I said, this is Chris's and uh, he might be looking for it when he gets home, but he'll understand because you guys drove all this way and you're taking us on this trip so you can have it. That's what I said. So then, you know, we went to bed and on Thursday morning, well, you were working. And so we knew that we had to leave early, which meant that I was going to have to wake up the miserable morning monster earlier than normal to help him get ready for our trip. And that miserable morning monster being you. (gasps) No way. Yep. Me? I I knew I was going to have to wake you up and have to get you to drink your coffee quickly and go through your morning routine in about 45 minutes, which normally takes you three hours. That's true. I'm like a lazy bum when I get mo- moving in the morning. You I'm just so like slow. A slug. You like, know? No, like slower, like sloth status. But that day, since I knew we were traveling and I knew we had a schedule to keep, I knew we had to get up and move. And I was already packed, right? So everything was good to go. I made sure you were packed. Yeah, you did, baby. So we got everything packed up and ready to go. And then we had to get to the airport. Actually, not to the airport. We had to get to CBX. Okay, but before that, before that, I get you up in the morning and you are like sitting down. And I was I was being so nice. I made you coffee. I even uh, microwaved you a breakfast sandwich. And I brought it to you. And I was like rushing around trying to get everything ready. And I'm like, is everything OK? And you're sitting there, you know, chatting it up with my parents. And you're like, but my breakfast is kind of cold. And I was like, uh, what? Oh, my breakfast sandwich is kind of cold in the middle. You, and remember, so, you remember that of all the things. Oh, I did. Because on that I day, because I was being so nice to you. And you were like, my breakfast is kind of cold in the middle. And I looked at you and I opened up the microwave and I said, well, you know how to fix it. <laughs> well, and and I, I walked off and you were like, oh, no, you got up and you go, oh, I guess so. I don't even know how to work this thing. How do I even work a microwave? <laughs> like, what do I press? I was like, you press a button. Well, well, like I, was how much lacking, time? I was lacking sleep and I, I was know, going on, on international dork. travel. And I always get nervous when I travel, always. Because you watch that stupid show, Locked Up Abroad. It's not stupid, all right? It is so stupid. It's not stupid. It's, it's, you're like, what it's if, facts. You're like, what if a person sneaks something into my bag? Like, don't even go near them. Like, don't even walk near or what, them. Or what if they get my name mixed up with some evil drug lord and then I get, like, uh, detained? Well, you are a lord, so, you know. Oh, that see, I'm that. already halfway there. <laughs> halfway there. So we get ready to leave, and we had to be out the door by, like, 9.45. And so the night before, I'd pre-scheduled Lyft to come and pick us up because I tend to like them better. Than Uber. Than Uber. So I pre-scheduled a Lyft, and it needed to be big enough to take us plus our bags because it was us plus my parents plus all of our bags. And so I'm watching it as you're like in the final stages of getting ready to come and pick us up. And then what happens, Chris? Well, they weren't they were late or they couldn't find the house or something happened. No, they canceled and then they said they they canceled and assigned us they canceled and assigned us to another driver. And then it was gonna take them thirty five minutes to get here, which would make us late. And so then I had to scrap it and had to last minute schedule us with an Uber who got here four minutes later. Right, no problem. He yeah. had a, he had a minivan or a van or something like that. Yeah, it was nice. So he had a van. We had room for all of our luggage, all of our stuff, and we flew on down to the border at CBX, which stands for Cross Border Express. Nope, Cross Border Exchange. I thought it was Express Exchange. Are you sure? Yep, Cross Border Exchange. Well, I screwed that up, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Think I know everything, but I don't. Yeah, but what what is CBX for those people that don't know? Because San Diego is right on the border with Mexico. What is CBX and what's its purpose? Now, CBX, it's like a border crossing that takes you directly into. It's like a bridge that goes right over the Mexico uh, international border wall or fence into the Mexican Department of Customs, which is right next to, I guess, the. Tijuana Airport. So it's like Not one. Next to it, it. They are part. They run in the same. Okay. So it's like basically a gateway that takes you from the American side directly over the border, a big long walk in this big, like, uh, tom- not tunnel, but big bridge thing over, and it dumps you right into Mexico's international airport at a Tijuana. Yeah, absolutely. And so it was our first time going through it, but my parents had gone through it, but. I watched YouTube videos and I read up everything and had all of our paperwork ready to go. Like I was being like, Judy, the cruise director, like, here you go. Here's your boarding pass and here's your health check questionnaire. The only thing we had to do when we got to the um, the U.S. side of CBX was get our visas. And, why, do you, why do you need a visa, by the way? I understand. What is a visa? Suitcase weighed. What is a visa? So a visa, when you go into another country, um, some countries require tourist visas to come and visit for a certain amount of time. I had to do one. 
Um, when I went to Australia, when I was admitted, they give you like they have to interview you and see how much time you're going to be there. And then they issue you a visa. And you keep that with you because as a visitor, if anybody was to ask you, do you have rights to be in this country, you'd have to be able to present your proof of going through the proper channels to enter their country. Otherwise, you could be there illegally. And so um, having that visitor's visa was really important. And so we had to go through a computer and get that done. Do you have and, to pay for that or is that something included with your passport? Um, and no, it's, there's no cost to it for those types of tourist visas. Now, if you go to a place for longer and you're getting a different category of a visa, like a student visa or a work visa, there could be costs associated with that. But we were just on a tourist visa. Okay. Because I asked another guy at work about that last night and he says he never had to do that when he's gone to ca- uh, Cancun many times and he's never had to get a visa. Oh, well, it's just maybe it's a process because of COVID, but because you go oh, through right. CDX. And you have to go through Mexican customs um, before you even enter into their airport terminal. They issue you the visa um, so that you have permission to be in the country. Gotcha. I thought you'd just walk into Mexico like it was a free-for-all. Back in the good old days, you could just walk across Mexico. They didn't check or care or nothing. Well, maybe you can if you're just walking across the border. I don't really know. So CBX is a little more controlled. It's a little more um, on the up and up. Right. So we walked through there and we got our luggage checked in and went through customs, got our visa, and then we arrived into the airport terminal. And, you know, it just looks like an airport terminal. It looks like a little bit more of a rural airport terminal. Maybe I thought it was nice looking. Yeah, I mean, it was nice, but like, I don't know, outside it was just more deserty. I guess maybe because we had like the Mexico visuals, like there was the runway and it was like desert and it just looked a little bit different. It is TJ after all, so. Well, yeah, it just looked different to me. Right. There wasn't a beautiful landscape of the ocean or anything like that. We could normally see like out of here or something like that. Yeah, but we made it through. We got to our, our gate on time. Although my parents went to go get lunch and everybody was lining up and I get like you get paranoid about travel. I get paranoid about not being able to get into the plane on time. And when we, I, whenever I have to travel with other people, I'm always worried that they're going to make me late because I like to be on the plane, settled, ready to go like way in advance. Not but we like, did make the flight. We all oh, got yeah. on the plane. But the thing was, your parents had different seats than us. Your parents had upgrade oh, seats. Oh, yeah. They had like premium. And I didn't know. We flew on the um, shout out to Valeras. We flew on this. What, airline. How did you pronounce Vol- it? Valeras? Vol- Valaris. 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 Now, I found this out through people at work is that Volaris is like the southwest of Mexican air travel. Yeah, it is. It's like the cheapest, cheapest seats. And I realized this as I sat in the seats <laughs> in the coach section of Volaris. It, they are so cramped. I have a little bit of longer legs, but let me tell you, my knees were jam packed to the guy's seat in front of me. Like that's And how- you even had man spreading going on. You were like sitting with a V, like impeding on my area and then but then you also scooch down just a little bit, like you weren't sitting up super straight. Even when I sat up straight, my knees were still hitting the hit in the back of the uh, seat. I don't know. I think if you would have sat up perfectly straight, uh, but you were I, like leaning back a little, and you were like cushy in, and you're like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm, but like, thank goodness I brought my side. head neck pillow with me, and I wore that on there, and I just passed out. You had one too. You probably slept too. And oh I'm, yeah, I packed your pillow for you. And we both took you're naps. Welcome. Thank you. We took naps on the flight all the way down to La Paz, and we actually do land in La Paz. Yeah, so we got a direct flight, which is the benefit of flying out of TJ, because if you fly out of San Diego, you can't get a direct flight to La Paz. You go to Los Cabos International Airport, and then you have to drive like an hour or two. And so there was a benefit to flying in there. And it was pretty inexpensive, I think, round trip. But that again, we were gifted that. It was wonderful. We were gifted the flights from my parents. And so um, we appreciated being able to even go. And then uh, when we landed in La Paz after we just walked out and went, you know, got our luggage, whatever, uh, my friends, my parents' friend picked us up in their little rental car and then took us out to the Marina de Cortez in La Paz. You remember Mexico. that? Good job, I did. Baby. Marina de Cortez. And then what did we do? We got on a little ferry boat that took us to our private island. A water taxi. It was Ooh. so cute. You know what's funny? The water taxi totally reminds me of the uh, boat ride at Disneyland and the Jungle Cruise. I know it really did. It looks like the Jungle Cruise boat. It's got the same little like canopy on top with the roll up like. Um, 
or the water. I don't know, what is it called? They're plastic tarp. Like the little barrier things on yeah, the side. Yeah. yeah, they're like plastic barriers that you zip up and roll up. You roll them down. Uh, some restaurants and patios have it. Anyways, right. it has those all around. It kind of, Except for the little, the little tugboat engine like the Jungle Cruise has. Mm-hmm. This one had an actual regular engine. And everybody's like looking over the side, like looking for fish and everything like that. So it did feel a little bit like the Jungle Cruise. But it wasn't that long of a ride over to the island. It was like maybe five minutes or something like that. Uh, yeah, right around there. On the boat. Getting yeah. over there wasn't it was a pretty quick ride over there. And then we pull up to the dock and it literally looks like you're on like entering some exotic island because they have like the cute little ramp that goes into this like thatched roof looking little kind of gazebo area with seating and fluffy pillows and people to welcome you. And I'm like, where are we going? And right the security now? guard and we all get in this van, like a big like van they had, and he gets your luggage. Like, come on in, he'll get your luggage for you. And he gets. I feel like we're we are another world, another country, obviously. But I feel like we're. It, it's like being in a, like a pampered. Like you're at a pampered um, exotic resort or something, right. you know. And we had no idea what to expect, so we start to we start off on this van, and it looks almost like a deserted island. And you see these big buildings in the distance, and a couple of them were still being built, so they looked like they weren't. Like, I don't know. I was wondering if it was like breaking down. You don't know what you're going to expect when you're going to a place you've never been before. But my parents said it was really nice. And so I was like, okay, this has got to be really nice. And so we pull up in front of the building and um, we were staying in a separate condo for the first couple of days. And we go up the elevator and we use the code and we enter into the condo. And I was blown away. It was very nice. It had had granite countertops in the kitchen, big, massive kitchen, big living room, a three t- balconies, a TV in every room, Netflix, uh, Wi Fi in the room. It had a view of the water, a view of the pool. Everything kind of faced towards the the way the design of the whole property was. It was like a big U shape. Like the right. buildings were spread out in like a big U, and in the center of the U would be the pool and the uh, the bar and the, the swim up bar and the yeah. restaurant and all that. And then beyond that would be like the beach and the water for like the bay. Yeah. So in the condo where we stayed, uh, we got the room that had the big king bed, and it had a. I mean, it was it had a huge bathroom, a big shower, a big sunken tub separate toilet area, a walk-in closet, two sinks. We had our own private balcony with a little couch there, and it overlooked the the lawn and then the infinity pool and beyond that, the beach and the Sea of Cortez. And that was the direction of the sunset too. And so it was really spectacular and um, had a full kitchen, like full-on kitchen with everything that you would need to survive. And like I was expecting – maybe more like an embassy suites kind of thing, like a little tiny kitchenette or whatever. But these are like condos that people there actually live in. Right. These are actually for purchase. If you'd like to purchase one, you can purchase one. But I found this out the hard way. You can't get a standard mortgage on it. You would have to pay cash. and these Or figure a different way out. Basically, you need to figure out a way to come up with the cash on your own. You can't get financing down there. And they, these aren't timeshares. They're not timeshares because everybody says, oh, they're probably timeshares. No, they're not timeshares. They're privately owned properties that people rent out for people like us to come down there. Right. And they sell for about $400,000. Well, just depending on which one you get. Yeah. Yeah. Some as cheap as two hundred, but some as high as four. Uh, and the HOA fees, oh my goodness. It was they- like 3300 a quarter, right? So basically, a thousand over a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, right around for that. the HOA fees. But enough about that. Anyways, it was great because it was beautiful. And if you would like to stay there, the resort is called the Paraiso del Mar. So P A R A I S O. And if you were to rent it off of VRBO, it was only like one hundred and twenty dollars a night to one hundred and fifty dollars a night, which is really reasonable when you're getting like a three bedroom, four bathroom condo with a full kitchen. And you can like cook for your family and be there and use the amenities. It was really that was fantastic. It was great. Yeah. So then that was on Thursday. And then on Thursday night after we got settled, we ended up getting right back on the water taxi. And um, there was one other couple that was there. They were the owners of the other condo that we ended up staying in at the end of our trip. Um, So there was four of us that were couples, my parents, their friends and these other new friends that we made plus us. We took the little water taxi and we ended up having dinner at this beautiful little restaurant. Um, we were on their um, 
wooden patio. It was an open air patio overlooking the harbor and the Sea of Cortez at sunset. And it was like something out of a dream. It was great. Yeah, we had we had there. I ordered the fish tacos. They were fantastic. I ordered three different types of fish. No, two different types of fish tacos. They were there. And uh, I forget what they were. The one was like Molly Molly or something. No, one was a tuna steak. Tuna steak. What was the other two I had? They were uh, something that started with a C, but they were a white fish taco. And it was, they called it the Tacos Edith. There's one, there's because there was like two things I want to do down in Mexico. One is eat fish tacos. And, the other and one, you did <laughs> so many times. <laughs> That's the one thing, because if you know anything about Baja, California, Baja, Mexico, is that it's famous for their fish tacos. In fact, Rubio's, which is a fish taco a restaurant here in San Diego. I think they're globally. But anyways, they were based on mimicking the fish tacos down in Baja. That's right. where they got their idea for the restaurant. So Yeah. And while we were at dinner, they asked us like what we wanted to drink. And I wanted water. And then they asked, well, do you want sparkling or still water? And I was like, well, uh, what kind of sparkling water? Because I was thinking like Pellegrino or something. And they said they had something called Topo Chico. What well, is Topo Chico? Well, so what I know is that I've been seeing all of these Instagram influencers drinking Topo Chico. And I was like, well, what is it? And then I saw it at the grocery store one day. And I was like, well, what, it, like, what does it taste like? And so I was like, well, I'll try this because I like sparkling water. And I love Pellegrino. But it does have a, a little bit of a um, flat, not flatness to it. It's just it has kind of a different bite to it. And so um, they brought me Topo Chico, and I'm hooked. I became addicted you to know, it. I've, I've tried Topo Chico because Chris, Christine gave me a sample of it, and I didn't care for it that much. But. Said, you don't have to care for it. I like it, and I think I'm going to get some because I like sparkling mineral water because I don't like to drink flat water very often, but I like something that has like the little bit of bubbles to it. And if you squeeze in a lime or a Ooh, lemon. You just made some Sprite. Right. It, it tastes really good. And my mom was like – well, can you just put a little bit of margarita mix at the bottom? And then she added in her Topo Chico and it was like a virgin margarita. Oh, fantastic. The kids would have, kids would have loved that. <laughs> yeah, they would have. But it was like a less than hey, speaking a, quarter of margaritas, of the, a quarter of the sugar. The first day we were there, we were at the pool, remember? And we ordered margaritas poolside. That wasn't the first day. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. I ordered I ordered margaritas at the pool. And we, oh, took, okay. we took them over there. That was the first drink we had in Mexico was the margaritas in the poolside bar, which were fantastic, by the way. So on Friday, the first full day there was uh, a, a day of relaxation. That's exactly what we did. We do. And that's it, why you can't remember because it's like what, so rare for you to have a day of relaxation. What did we do on like Friday? Literally, was like we did nothing on Friday. Uh, well, I wouldn't say nothing. We vacationed because you are used to vacation being go 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 go. That's go. true. I always am. I was like every day has to be planned out, and we have to hit as much as we possibly can. But but on Friday. We didn't you were getting irritated because you were like on your phone. You're like, are we going to go do anything? And I'm like, I just want to sit on a hammock and read my book. And you were like, well, aren't we going to go do stuff? And I'm like, this is vacation. And so what we were talking about is the difference between a trip and a vacation. A trip is like you're going on a trip to go do all of these different things. And a vacation is like a state of mind. It's like being able to like immerse yourself in relaxation. Finally, like halfway through the day, I think I got you there and we got our stuff on and we went down to the pool and I think that was the day that I introduced you to swim up bars, isn't that? Yeah, I believe so. We actually, I, uh, that's right. The two things I want to do in Mexico, now, now <laughs> I remember. One was eat fish tacos, fabulous fish tacos down in Baja. And the second thing I wanted to do, which I've always wanted to do in my entire life was actually go up to a swim up bar and order a drink. I've never done that. In fact, I'm not alone because we met another girl down there and she said the very same thing. She yeah. always also has never gone up to a swim up bar. Yeah. And, and my first experience with a swim up bar was when my parents took us when I was uh, like 18 to an all inclusive in Mexico and the drinks were like free. And of course, I, I didn't want to drink alcohol at that time. Why not? I didn't want to. I could have. Okay, but, yeah. Um, I didn't. And so I just like swam up and got my virgin daiquiris. But um, we spent a lot of time in the pool. And the thing about this place is that it has this huge, beautiful infinity pool. And when you perch on the ledge of it, like we were in the water and we had our drinks in our hand and we were kind of leaning on the that infinity edge of the pool looking out on the Sea of Cortez. And it was like sun was coming down just a little bit. It was so relaxing. And and earlier in the day, I had taken my book down and I was going to read for a little bit, but I just sat in the hammock and I just kind of like 
swung in the little bit of the breeze that was there because it wasn't super hot that first day and really just like tried to decompress because it has been a long spell of going through COVID and everything. And everybody at this resort was very conscious, like all of the workers were very conscious of COVID and the city of La Paz actually had a very low incidence rate of COVID because everybody had been so careful. And, and they're so, still very careful. Like every, right. everywhere you go, you have to wear a mask. You got to wear a mask. I Not on that resort, though. No, but you had to wear a mask when you were um, in town. Right. And on the water taxi, which I thought was kind of right. odd. Being, you're kind of got outdoors, you know, on that. But then thing. when you come back to the island, you had to step on this thing to. Well, before you got on the boat and then when you got onto the island, step onto this thing to um, clean the bottom of your shoes. And then you had to get your temperature taken and sanitizer when you came back from the dock and they were very careful and so it was really nice to like be somewhere where we could like space uh, space ourselves out from others and have a few drinks and then after we relaxed for a bit we had um, all planned all four of us couples to take the water taxi back into town to go to a place called El Mesquite Grill. Ooh, now El Mesquite Grill, from what I've been told, and now my experience being there, is that it's one of the fanciest steakhouses in all of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the fanciest, but it's some of the best steak that you can get, right? It's, it's funny. The actual dining room is like outside. It looks like the back of some guy's garage. is what the No, dining- why are you putting it down? The dining room is like outside, all open, like a backyard patio. I'm sorry, a backyard patio. Yeah, it was more of a backyard patio. They did a very nice job with it. It was very clean. Um, they had um, it's like some wood covering it. But it's interesting because you walk down the street and we were with Rich, one of my parents' friends. And he's like, I I know I said we're here. We're like 100 yards away. But I don't know if this is it. Like this just doesn't look right. And he'd not been there before. And then we showed up and the rest of the party was already sitting down. They had like an open air bar. And then we looked at the menu and there's all of these different steak options, which sometimes it's really hard when you go to another country to find a place that will serve a good steak. But this place, the Mesquite Grill, was really famous for their steaks. Right, Chris? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yes, they were. They're very famous for their steaks. From what I've been told, they have big uh, – didn't they have like a big like mural on the wall? It's a Mesquite Grill. Oh, Mesquite Grill something. since like 1970-something or no, something. No, 85. Oh, okay. That's what it was. I remember it was 1985 is what it said. Yeah, so we were looking at the menu and trying to figure out, and I was like, Chris, what do you want? He's like, I don't know. What do you want? And we were being treated to dinner from somebody else. And so uh, I think it was my my dad's friend was paying for everybody, which was kind of odd for us to you know be surrounded by so many super generous people. It was just like... You kind of don't know how to operate because you're like, well, should I just get a salad or like right. should I get a leaf of lettuce? Because, should I get like, surf and turf or should I or should I just get a – yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to be um, inconsiderate when somebody is trying to be kind. And so what they ended up having and everybody was kind of talking about this is they had this thing – called Chateau Briand. Ooh, that sounds fancy. What is that, baby? Well, we didn't know. It was like this really fancy cut of like filet that was sliced into like almost medallions. But you could order this meal and it said it was like four courses, but it was super reasonably priced. It was like for a group of four, it was like $60 an American, maybe $55, $60 total for four of us to have this meal. And it came with salad and then we were like waiting to see if the other courses were going to come out and they bring out these huge white porcelain platters uh, and there was eight of us so we ordered two sets of them and it was piled with baked potatoes with like this yummy creamy sauce on them and parmesan cheese and fresh parsley and then this stack of Chateaubriand which is like I don't know there was enough slices of filet on there to feed like seven people on one tray <laughs> and then right it's been not only do they do that there they also do these big giant uh burgers like cheeseburgers like massive right. burgers you're talking like double triple patty stacked right. up kind of thing and they're not little like quarter pounder they're like two and a half pounder they're yeah huge. they're huge it was so funny uh the table behind us a guy and his dad were having dinner by themselves you know and the son bigger guy he orders one of those big massive cheeseburgers like big thing on his plate and your mom was so funny your mom looks at the thing she, your eyes are wide open and she's like i gotta take a picture of that so your mom <laughs> runs around she <laughs> runs around table. runs to the other person's table and she gets her phone out says, i'm gonna take a picture of your uh, burger no, she said first can i take a picture of your food and the guy was like 
laughing like sure but i don't think he thought she was serious and I'm like whenever it comes to my mom in photos she's always serious so she uh, went over and then she was like right there and the guy what did he say uh thanks and he was like um oh, oh okay you were serious and so she's like yeah she's so cute i, I just think it's mom. weird taking pictures of other people's food i know it's some places hey, you have stop cr- calling my mom weird i'm not not saying she's weird i, I just think that like like if you're gonna dive in, I I don't know. But it was a funny picture, and we have it. It was so funny. But oh, awesome. But then this tray came out, and it had these four huge baked potatoes, not little ones, but huge baked potatoes. This huge stack of steak, and then there was a, like a bowl of this mushroom gravy, which Chris doesn't normally like, but it was really good. I don't normally like gravy either, but it was really good. And then all of these fresh veggies, and it was like, um, what what kind of veggies was it? Can you remember? Oh, I think it might have been asparagus. Something like that. And, and cactus. Oh, that's right. I, tried, no, I, I ate cactus for the first time. Who would have knew that cactus, of course, take the little pricklies off, of course, uh-huh. uh, would actually be something you actually could eat. Yeah, paddle cactus it is was what a, it is. Yeah, they took the pricklies off and then they like cooked it so it was a little softer and you just cut it with a knife and fork and you eat it. And it may have, it may have had some seasoning on it or some something on it, you know. But but it was really good. And then there yeah, was like bad. other like peppers and things like that. It was that. very interesting. Let's put that and way. And fresh tomatoes. That's what it was. Tomato slices. And right. so we had this huge plate of food and then we all took so much home. And, you know, that reminds me from the first night. You were very adventurous with your eating on this trip because the first night we had dinner there. Do you remember what other food that you tried for the first time? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't remember. Okay. So you had some type of uh, like a clam or an oyster. But then... I've had oyster before. But then you had something that tends to have some suction cups on it. Oh! <laughs> I ate a tentacle of an octopus. <laughs> Yeah. It actually it was funny. It wasn't fried either. It was actually the octopus tail it was like a little chunk of the octopus. And you could see the little suction cups from its full thick so fingers on the part I, I was ate. Like, I'm not kissing you. <laughs> well, actually, I ate it with some other stuff too, and it, it was kind of chewy. It tasted a little it was kind of like a, a clam or something. So I'm guessing because I've heard that octopus consistency and escargot snails are very similar. So now you're ready to go. You can have a snail now. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe if it's cooked right. You know, but it's what's mixed crazy in. is you ate an octopus and then we saw one a little bit later. Did you feel bad when you saw the one? Like, did you apologize to it? I, I, I did. I said, <laughs> I, I said, I'm sorry. I bowed down. And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I ate your brother. I say, I ate your brother. Yeah. Hey, speaking of which, on that day, we're going moving into Saturday now. Oh, yeah. And on Saturday, we had an entire day. This is the day that was completely trip was booked for be the trip of not vacation trip but trip trip (laughs) makes sense and it was an excursion that my dad had booked for us it was like his favorite excursion and so what did we do chris why don't you kick it off okay so we had to go down to the boat dock and make sure we were all dressed up appropriately including like your swim trunks and we we bring towels and and Uh what else would we bring when we were down there sunscreen i don't know chris what did you bring because that was a whole other story before we even got the day started my cameras uh you had a fit i well we did have a fit you had a fit because i was in the middle of a conversation and then you wanted me to tell you exactly what to pack and i was like well honey we're going out on the boat for the day so just you know pack what you think you need like the cameras and whatever else oh you were so mad that i wouldn't come and pack your rag for you you didn't uh, speak to me for 30 minutes i don't remember that. <laughs> i don't see I don't, I don't remember the anger that would that i, I try to like defuse it out of my brain forever mm-hmm. because i only wanted to think lovely thoughts about you oh so glad always i wish you would remember some of those mean things sometimes so that you don't repeat them <laughs> okay moving on <laughs> We get on the boat, which is an excursion boat that takes us out to some island. Well, we had to pick up a few more passengers, but then we went out to... Oh, now I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was um, the... Oh, I know what it was called. uh, Espiritu Santo. Okay. It was called the Isle of Espiritu Santo, which means the Isle of the Holy or Island of the Holy Spirit in, in English. But it was like this magical, protected area that like had um, all these really different ecosystems. And I, apparently, the island of Espiritu Santo has 300 distinct species of flora and fauna that are found nowhere else in the world. That's fantastic. And guys, she didn't even read the manual. She I just did. came off the top of her head. I remembered that because I thought that was really amazing that it's this place that the Mexican people are so like they value so much and i don't know if we find that as often in the u.s where 
it's something is kept and preserved so carefully. Like we have national parks and people are like, oh, there's so many unique species. Let me go take photos of them. But here, like there's very specific places that you can actually dock your boat. Um, you can't even swim in some areas because of the protected uh, species that are in the water. And they're just very careful to make sure that we don't like impact any of the ecosystems around there negatively. So we took a boat ride, a boat tour. It was a full day excursion. We included snorkeling, a, a beach lunch, which they parked a boat on the beach and they get a lunch for us. And we get to go tour around these islands and look at sea lions and uh, pelicans and what are things we no, looked at? No, they were frigates. They weren't pelicans. Oh, they were? Yeah. They, were- hey, they look like birds to me. I don't know. No, they were an exclusive type of um, frigates. And the unique thing about this bird that lives on this specific island and it has its habitat is even though it's a bird that lives on an island in the middle of the ocean, it can't actually get wet because it doesn't have the regular. You know, that's got to be a that's got to be a that's got to suck. Yeah. It looks like they can't touch the water or else they can't get rid of it and it'll weigh them down and they'll, you know, die or drown. And so um, they, it was really cool to watch them. I guess that this specific type of frigate is known for its gliding, that it can hang without having to flap its wings for up to two months, they said. No way. Yeah, because of the way that it glides and because no it's way. so aerodynamic. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I heard that, was it uh, sea lions can hold their breath uh, under the water for? Sea turtles. Sea turtles. No, sea turtles. That's for right. seven hours. Sea turtles, seven hours. Check yeah, that out. they get a quick breath. And so we saw the sea turtles, we saw the sea lions, then we went and had lunch on the beach, and then what did we do? Then they pulled, took us, well, first we had, we went swimming at that be- at that actual, like, beach spot they docked us on. Mm-hmm. They pulled the boat up, park it, and they put these anchors in the water, so it doesn't go anywhere. And that would suck if your boat just, like, drifted away. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, guys, <laughs> everybody go swimming, <laughs> get your boat. But we did go swimming in the water, and the water was so clear. It was like water ball bottle clear yeah the water. in this one like area we were this at beautiful color of like aqua kind of turquoise and green it was just beautiful it, we swam there had lunch there then they load us up in the boat and they took us over this little island they had this little rock little formation island just maybe like 100 yards or maybe a little further off the the uh, beach we were just mm-hmm. at and they gave us snorkeling gear and we all jumped in the water mm-hmm. and went snorkeling and that's where i saw my little octopus down there at the bottom of the ocean yeah they called the little island the rock formation i think it was called like uh candelari candelari or something like that because it looks like a candle and there used to be this rock at the top of it that looked like a wick to a candle and so that was what we snorkeled around and uh, we saw these fish, like all different kinds of species. And you got great video of them on the GoPro, Chris. But the sergeant fish, they were like blue and yellow with stripes on them. Um, I got to see the octopus after you. I got to see an eel, which Ooh. was really awesome. And then a bunch of other types of fish. And I would say that the kinds of fish that I saw there were more than what we even saw when we were snorkeling off the shore from our hotel in Hawaii. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we saw lots of, lots of fish. They're all ki- kinds of fish. I got it all on the GoPro. Hey, speaking of which, uh, there's a little GoPro video, a video that I made from the trip. You can check it out on our website at www.chrisandchristineshow.com. Yeah, and it was just really great scenery and super fun. And then we just enjoyed the boat ride back. It was about 45 minutes back to our resort. And after that day, we were just kind of like, out of it and so we went down and we soaked in the spa and had a couple more drinks and then we just had leftovers and kind of vegged out right chris that's right now moving on to sunday now sunday happened to be father's day so father's day it was kind of weird because i was down in mexico with with your dad and your mom and everybody and all that but my kids were not with me our uh, kids our, I'm sorry, our kids well it's father's day but so there are kids i know there are kids but me being a father my f- kids on Father's Day were not with me on Father's Day. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So how did that feel? Sad, actually. You know? What's funny is we were making the plans for the trip, and then I realized it was Father's Day weekend, uh, like right after my parents invited us. And I just said, like, after you were like, yeah, let's go. I said, hey, Chris, I just realized it's Father's Day weekend, though, and I think that you'll be kind of, like, depressed if we're not with the kids. You're like... I see him every weekend. Every weekend's Father's Day. That, I don't need to be is, with them on Father's Day. That is true until it actually becomes Father's exactly. Day. Exactly. And then you've seen all these posts on Instagram and Twitter of all like pictures with their kids and their dads and a lot of stuff. I'm like, oh, well, I got to find a picture to post too. <laughs> 
But we did celebrate with your dad the weekend before. And then I got to pamper you guys, all the men. I made um, a fantastic brunch on that morning from uh, Cafe de Christine, right? Cafe de Christine is in the house. And thank goodness we were in a condo that had a full kitchen and staff. And I'm not a staff, but a full kitchen and all the goodies you need. <laughs> yeah, make. I was your staff. Yeah, the, sta- <laughs> the staff was great, by the way. A little sassy sometimes, but she was great. <laughs> So I um, made up a brunch and served it to you all on the patio. And um, yeah, it was really fun. I made like this egg scramble and we had some uh, fresh peppers and tomatoes and um, cooked up some of the remaining potatoes from the dinner a couple nights before, made breakfast potatoes and some fresh refried beans that we had and made a beautiful plate with this yummy egg scramble and got to serve it to everyone. And we had Father's Day brunch overlooking the Sea of Cortez, and it was really tasty. On the patio, yeah. right? Big old patio table on the big balcony they had. We were actually on the fourth floor, so we had a nice little view of everything. Mm-hmm. We're actually, it's funny, we're almost like palm tree height. The palm tree uh, leaves were the same height as our room, which right. was like right there, yeah. which is kind of nice. They were ruffling in the wind a lot. Yeah. But- and what's funny is I wanted to take all the guys that were with us out to dinner for Father's Day dinner. And I had hoped that we would be able to go into town or I just wanted to do something because like I don't often get to have Father's Day with my dad. And then also for you, honey, like wanted to do something special because I was trying to do special things on the trip for each of you instead of like giving just a regular gift, like do experiences together because I prefer that versus like people opening presents. And so uh, right after breakfast, the guys were like, we're going to go inside and we're going to have like man talk for a minute. And then basically it was deciding what do you want to do for dinner tonight? It's like, yeah. what do you, do you guys want to do? And we're like, well, I actually like the, the, the pool bar restaurant they had there, which is like a little patio set up and they had a grill on the pool bar. They had menu, but it they, was a regular restaurant too called survivor. <laughs> it was just weird. It actually, it's not where they filmed survivor at. Um, but it is called Survivor. I think Survivor. everybody knows that. Oh, I just don't let anybody know. <laughs> so anyways, we all decided we're just going to eat there after we get back from our adventure. And this was our last full day. Actually, our last day really there in La Paz. So it's make the best of it. Yeah, for and, us because we were leaving earlier than everybody else. And, and there's one thing that we had not done yet on this entire trip. And that was go into town and be a total tourist and do some shopping. Right. Because we wanted to get some souvenirs and bring them back and – Do some sightseeing because when you're in another country, you want to actually like see what it's like to live there. And it was a beautiful little town with all these cutesy little shops, not just for souvenirs, but jewelry stores, restaurants, ice creams, all kinds of stuff. And we wanted to go do a little bit of shopping and at least bring something back for the boys, right? Absolutely. So we cruised around town. We had some ice cream at a little ice cream shop, which is kind of fun. Uh, we walked around. To, we went to a Sears. They have Sears still, by the way. They're all right. closed, closed here. They have one there. And we got you your Father's Day gift, which was your favorite cologne. And they had it in a gift set. So well, we actually got cologne, more. What kind of cologne is that, by the way, baby? It was Giorgio Armani. Giorgio Armani. Yeah, Aqua, Aqua di Gio. Aqua di Gio. Mm-hmm. There you go, baby. I used to sell that when I was in college when I worked at the men's fragrance counter. Oh, really? Yeah. That used to be my go-to back in the day. I haven't used it in a while. but uh, What are you talking about? You have it all the time and you travel with it. That's true. But I recently got back into it because I was kind of like bouncing around different flavors. I'm sorry, scents. I, I always call them flavors. You always call them flavors. Well, they're, they're, you're like, honey, do you like this flavor <laughs> of my cologne? I was like, well, what do you want me to do? Lick you? <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. So we got that. We walked around the streets and took a little tour of everything. We went to lunch at this little place called Route 66 Diner for Roll Tacos, a.k.a. Taquitos. Was, yeah. I, I still call them Roll Tacos. Yeah, that's so... I, I don't even know what to say to you. They're what? called Taquitos. Out here, we call them Roll Tacos. No, that's, no you call them Roll Tacos. Look at the menu. Any taco All shop of, here... Because they translated for you guys. Okay. Well, they're called Roll Tacos here. That's why they're called Taquitos. They're little tacos. Taquitos. They're, so I got those. We got some stuff over there. And then we kind of walked around the streets. and kinda, Until I found a jewelry store. <laughs> until Christine found a jewelry store i said honey you go do you do you do you baby you didn't have to tell me anything i said you can do whatever you want but i'm gonna go into that jewelry store and i want to take a look around of course you do and the salesman was so nice he was so nice he was like uh he was like 
oh, sir, do you want to get her a ring? And you're like, she's got her own money. And then he was like, <laughs> all right. And then he was like, you can sit there. Do you want a Corona? So Chris sat on the couch and had a Corona. He's like, I'll get you a Corona for you. So he calls a girl in the back. Hey, go get him a Corona. <laughs> so he gives me a Corona. <laughs> a I'm Coronita. Kicking. It was a little Corona. Yeah. That's fine. Fine with me. So I'm drinking a nice cold Corona while Christine's doing the shopping, uh, the jewelry. The guy's pulling that ring after ring, showing her different stones and different uh, things. But you end up did walking at the store or something. I did. I, since I was 18 and I discovered opals when I was in Australia, told myself that one day I would buy myself an opal because there was these beautiful fiery looking opals in Australia. I just think that they're such a beautiful stone and they are just, I don't know, they're, every one of them is absolutely unique. Like there's no two opals that are the same. Really? I had no yeah, idea. Absolutely. The coloring is all different in every single one you will not find on the face of the planet two identical opals unless they're like fake and manufactured and so he had this beautiful well he had a beautiful display of opals but then I found one that had the same shape and setup as my wedding ring which would make it like really look nice on the other hand and so it was an opal in the center and they were um they were from the waters in Mexico and then white sapphires were all around it and it was in a special setting that was silver, but covered in rhodium so it doesn't tarnish. Ooh, fantastic. I know. And it was so if, beautiful. If I knew what that meant, it would it'd be amazing. Well, and then he like told me what the, he was telling me. I'll give you the best price on everything. And then he's like, I'll give you the 20% off of everything. And so I was looking at it and I put the ring on and it was the perfect size. And then he's like, come look at it outside. He's like, you could take it outside. And I said, no, you can take it outside and I'll walk with you because I didn't want him to like think that I was stealing it. Oh, right. Because right. when you put the opal in light, it just the colors are like fire. There's like orange and green and pink and it's beautiful. And so I said, I think I want to get it as I'm walking back in with the guy. And he was like, OK. And I said to him, but... I don't want to pr- pay the price you told me. And so then I threw out a price to me and he was like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> he didn't even try to come back with me and like wiggle around. And so um, from the original sticker price, I ended up getting uh, 25% off and then having him drop it down an additional $25 for me. Oh, there you go, babe. I know. Fantastic. And it's so beautiful and I love wearing it and forever. It's my graduation gift to myself and forever I'm going to remember like from when I was 18 and I was just a freshman in college to now finishing my college career, being able to actually buy that for myself was really special. That is fantastic. So Thank you. That was the kind of the wrap up of that day. We got back on the water taxi, aka the Jungle Cruise, uh-huh. and we took it back over the little bay to our private island, which we got back to the condo. And that was when we decided we were going to go all go down to the patio. To- I had reservations for us. Christine made reservations for the dinner at the patio there at the Survivor at the Survivor Restaurant. Survivor Restaurant. And you had fish tacos again. Of surprise, course they did. Surprise. I told you there's two things I want to do. That's fish tacos and do a swim bar. Yeah. And I had this like shrimp quesadilla. Oh, actually, was so there, good. Was, there was three things I wanted to do. I almost forgot to mention. No. And then the other one you didn't even know you wanted to do until I gave it to you as an option after dinner. So, so I get to say this one okay. because I have always wanted to do this, but... First of all, I love kayaking. I think it's very fun and I enjoy it, especially when it's not like in a race. I think that in the right kind of waters, it's just a really beautiful way to experience nature because there's no motors and it's just silent and all you hear like the waves and the wonderful people that um, they were the Smiths, actually, that was their last name, that we were staying in their condo had two single person kayaks that were already uh, resting on the dunes that just needed to be pulled out into the water. And so I asked Chris before dinner, if after dinner we could go kayaking at sunset on the Sea of Cortez. And we did that. But this is also, I I didn't, Christine didn't know this, but this was actually my very (laughs) first time I ever used a kayak. I've always wanted a kayak. I see them for sale at Walmart, Costco all the time. I always wanted to buy one. The kids want to get one too. And And I I thought that you'd always ridden on them because you always are looking at them. I figured you had some great memory of it. I always, memory, memories were like, 
like dreaming I'd wish I had one. That's my Aww. memory. I never had one. I've always wanted one. So I've always wanted to try one. I never used one. So this is my first time experiencing it. It was fantastic, by the way. Although I was a little nervous, you know, because I thought sharks were going to bite <laughs> How me. How nervous were you? I was crying like a little girl at the time. <laughs> oh, like a shark. Why do you got to put down a girl? I okay. was stronger than you. You, you were, were crying like a little baby boy. That's that's true. I was like, I think a shark pit bumped me. I think I think a whale bumped me. Yeah, oh, yeah literally. Oh, no. <laughs> we were like less than 30 feet, maybe 40 feet off the coast at one point. And you were like, Something just bumped my boat. And I was like, no, honey, it was just a little bit of the the, the choppiness in the water because it started to get a bit windy. And you're like, nope, see, there it is again. And I was like, I was watching. It was the wave. No, no, no. I really think something's dragging on the bottom. I'm like, you're fine. I'm looking at you right now. Yeah. And I well, also, too, we did not have any life protection either. So it was we're just in the boats with our shirts, regular clothes on there with our paddles. And uh, I was trying to figure out how to do the paddling on that thing. And I was like way ahead of you. And then I was back. I was going to circle. Like, and I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? And I was like, honey, just paddle like normal. And then you started like I was watching how you paddled. And then it hit me. And I was like do you know how to paddle a kayak? No, it's my first time. And I was like, but you've told me you kayaked before. No, I said I wanted to kayak before. And I was like, oh gosh, okay, let me help you. And then I was like coaching you through it. And you did really great. Oh, thanks, babe. And it was so funny because I wanted to go around the point because my whole thing was not only did I want to kayak at sunset, but in the bay area, like in not in the marina, but in the space in between the island we were on, and the city of La Paz, there was this huge pod of dolphins that were consistently playing in the area. And I had this dream. That would have scared me. If a dolphin, <laughs> dolphin bumped my kayak and knocked me out, I would have been freaked out. Oh, my gosh. I just had this dream of, like, the dolphins coming and playing alongside of us. I didn't even think about, like, what would happen if they knocked us over. <laughs> oh, I would. I would I'll be like, oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm going to die. They're going to eat me. The fish are eating me. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. So we turned around. We didn't go around the point. And then um, our friends were on the beach and they were do like walking along the beach and got some cute photos of us from a distance. And then you were using the GoPro. It was seated behind you. So it was catching you paddling and then me along the side of you a bit. And the sunset was exceptional on that night. And I would just say that like when we paused and we turned our kayaks around and just watched the sunset, that is one of my favorite memories I think that I'll ever have in my life is like sitting on our first international trip and taking a risk and being out in the ocean kayaking off of shore watching the sunset on what was kind of like a a honeymoon for us I mean we had our honeymoon and it was great here locally but it was like our first getaway and it was like so romantic and the only thing that would have been better is if we had champagne Oh, while well, we're kayaking, I got a trick to do. I know. I, I know. I, know, I would have knocked myself off the boat doing that. Hey, don't mess with my dream. I know. But actually, we I did take some great shots with the GoPro um, kayaking and pictures because the GoPro does take pictures too. Pretty right. good pictures at that. And we took pictures of the sunset. You can see those. We have those on our social media. Yeah. And it's on that video that Chris posted also. And then, you know, at the end of that night we just knew that we had to get packed up because we had to leave early in the morning and then we came home to San Diego and felt a lot more refreshed and it just was a wonderful little getaway for our first little trip and experiencing CBX and international travel Uh, but you know after that I have to say, you're a very nervous traveler, Chris. I hate traveling. And so it's made me wonder like you know I love international traveling, but seeing this helped me to really understand the magn- magnitude of your anxious traveling. Um, do you want to continue to travel internationally with me, or would you like me to just you know, go uh, on my own? Honestly, though, I'm okay if I never international travel again. That's just but that's just me, and I think a couple of reasons why is that I major anxiety traveling as it is, a major anxiety going through the whole customs situation and going through the whole. Uh, CBX and the different, the different, all the different barriers you have to go through, all the different hoops you have to go through. Uh, seems like a pain in the butt to me. I'm always like, a, is it a big pain in the butt? Yes, it is. No, thank you, Chris. Yeah. So that leads me to my question because I've been talking about this with some of my girlfriends is that I've found out that there's a lot of couples where one of the partners really likes to travel and the other doesn't and they're okay with the other person traveling without them. Um, are you going to want me to stop traveling or are you okay if I continue to like sow my adventurous 
roots. Baby, if you love traveling, you've traveled. You you have more experience. I know your parents have been like every continent in the world. So they love traveling. You love traveling. That's your guys' thing. Growing up, we never traveled. We yeah. never went anywhere. So well, so, no, you. I mean, you did domestic travel. Well, right. That's yeah, and that's another thing too. There's so many places here in America, United States of America, that you can travel to and visit that are just as good as any place in the world. I know, but I really want to see the world. So are you going to be bothered if I still no? Go right ahead, baby. Go go right ahead. Just as long as I get to travel to wherever I want to travel to here in America or whatever. <laughs> and I'll go with you. That's fine too, baby. I'm saying that like I like – and also too – You I, like road trips too. I do love road trips. I love road trips and I do love uh, – because that's what I used to go on as a kid was yeah. road trips. We never flew anywhere. You know, aeroplane, you got out of here, you're nuts. So another thing too I thought about this too. We got to America, back home, to the United States of America. Visiting a third world country like we were in, you really do would appreciate – United States of America more. I do right. really, and I do appreciate it more. And not to be kind of like a first world snob, but it might sound like this. Don't but don't be snobby. I'm not. What I'm just saying is I really appre- I really feel more comfortable and enjoy more being here. That's mm, just that, that, well, that's all the more reason why I should make you travel because that's very self centered and like not a broad world view. But our kids, I am dedicated to our children having a very broad world view. And to be very understanding and respectful of different cultures. So well, they will I am with respectful me. of other cu- cultures. I just saying that I enjoy this one. Now I do want to know after seeing me in Mexico because you know I am part Mexican and experiencing me navigating another country. What and, did our tra- you- and our, lo- our I- local translator was Christine. By I was the just going to ask you, what did you think about my skills with Spanish? You were fabulous, Christine. It, it's funny, Christine can uh, uh, hear. Um, perfect Spanish and she can read perfect Spanish but she can't say perfect Spanish but I was able to navigate us pretty well right oh really well you understood exactly what they're saying and you kind of uh, were able to say a few words to kind of get the conversation flowing so you understood what they were saying which is great because yeah because I would understand what they're saying and then I could sometimes figure out the words but that's a weird thing with my language acquisition and I've said that before and people would laugh like they didn't really believe me when I would say like I'm pretty fluent in understanding and in what I can uh, like when I hear and what I can read, I can tell you exactly what it says and I can respond back in English and people are like, well, then you're not a real Mexican or whatever. But did you see me fitting in there? Oh, you sure did, baby. Yeah. It was fantastic. By the way, that trip was amazing. Thank you so much for for inviting me and uh, for taking me on this adventure with you. And I just want to say like, I haven't been to Mexico to travel like that for a long time. And especially after finishing my doctoral work and really connecting with so many stories of Latino women, uh, being back in Mexico, I wasn't born and raised in Mexico. I was born here. But connecting back with my cultural roots, it just gave me this really deep appreciation, even more so for the Mexican people and looking at how much they've overcome and just the type of people that were there and so humble and servant hearted and just very welcoming and inviting and very hospitable. And it just helped to remind me of, you know, growing up the characteristics of my grandmother and um, just to realize like what I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but I remember I was sharing this with you is that the first settlers in California were actually Mexican people. This used to be Mexico. And that's what I heard. So I've been told, yes. And so even like the Kumeyaay population of Native Americans has Latin roots. And so I was learning about them as I was in Mexico also um, about the Kumeyaay who are really present here in San Diego. And so just reminds me that like so much of my culture is everywhere. And I really loved being back there. And I wouldn't mind, even if you don't want to travel, going back and spending a week or two and really trying to stretch myself to learn the language a bit better. Well, you don't have to go down there to learn the language, baby. But you do to be immersed in it because otherwise people are constantly trying to speak to you in English and to be immersed in the culture and to just, I don't know, I think it would be great for me. My grandmother, my step-grandmother had offered that when Zeke was little to pay for me to go and study down there with my family for four or six weeks. And I didn't take her up on it. And now I'm like, gosh, if I wonder how life would be different if I was truly bilingual. 
Well, live and learn, baby. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? So, hey, uh, has you got anything else on this uh, fantastic adventure? No, I just wanted to say that I had so much fun. And shout out to my parents and their friends for welcoming us into their adventure. I really will remember this forever. And it was such a great way to celebrate graduation. It sure was. And if you want to see all the fantastic adventures we went on this trip we just described, you can go to our website at www. Chris and Christine show.com. And that is Chris and Christine with K's. And I added in the adventures of Chris and Christine right on the website, which Woo-hoo! has videos of trips we went on. Uh, three trips are on there, although there's a fourth trip I got to find and put on there. But three trips are on there right now. And highlighted in the middle is the trip we just went on, which was a trip to Mexico. And coming up later this summer, we will be having our second annual family road trip vacation. And we'll make a GoPro video of that, too. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I love making these little GoPro videos. I, I love do them. too. And thanks so much for being here with us. And we'll be back with you next week. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward.